Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of my podcast, This Girl Shoots. I'm Brianna Lucy Photography, a local portrait photographer in the Tampa Bay area. And today I have my two special guests, Miss Tamara Tish, and we have Alana Vasquez, two freelance models here in the Tampa Bay area. So, guys, I want to talk about red flags first of photographers, not only in the Tampa Bay area, but just anywhere in Florida, for example. So when a photographer is contacting you over IG or, or any other social media platform, what kinds of what kind of red flags do you guys receive while you're communicating with them? And if not, like while you're communicating while you're on a photo shoot, because that can also mm-hmm. get really creepy, too. That's so good. You want me to go first? You want to go first? <laughs> sure, you can go first. OK, <laughs> red flags. There are many. Well, I think one of the biggest ones for me personally would probably be um, if the content that I portray on my Instagram is completely different than the content, the content that the photographer has, um, I'm very modest in a lot of my work. And if a photographer comes and wants me to shoot nude, <laughs> well, basically, I mean, basically they're like, you know, let me shoot you for free. And then it's, you know, content that's completely different than yours. And I kind of just feel like if you're reaching out to somebody and it's different than what they normally, you know, take for content, there should be an initiative of like, okay, well, what are they actually going to get out of this? You know, exactly. so like that kind of a lot of like when they kind of reach out to you for their own personal gain and basically offer you nothing that you would right. want. It's like the model is getting the short end of the stick that in that scenario yeah exactly that's probably one of mine (laughs) yeah to add on to that i'd say the same like if you're already looking at their page and it's all their photos are just girls in lingerie and just they're using a type of preset or something that is just completely not (laughs) yeah in your aesthetic i guess but yeah right So how do you guys, have you ever like looked at a photographer's page and be like, oh, well, these are obviously fake. These are stolen photos from God knows where. Oh yeah. (laughs) When it has like some little link at the bottom of the picture, you already know they screenshotted that off Google or something. Yeah. Or there's no captions, no tags. And it's just like hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. And then like, if you go to their tagged photos. So what I do if I'm uncomfortable with the idea of shooting with a photographer, I'll go to their photos and look for tagged models. Um, and either they're going to have them or they're not. And if they don't, it's a red flag automatically. Exactly. Because what model doesn't want to be credited for their content that yeah. they spent a couple <laughs> exactly. hours shooting, right? Yeah. And then another part of it is if they're tagged and you go to, I reach out to those models. Like if I feel it's necessary, I'm like, hey, you know, this person wants to shoot with me. What was your experience? And they're either going to come back and say like, oh, it was kind of, odd like I um I have a lot of model friends here which I'm very blessed for because I can kind of like talk with them about like new photographers in the area and whatever but like you have to hone in on (laughs) the models and um kind of their experience to kind of get an idea of what you're going to be expecting with that photographer exactly you know another thing that's kind of like kind of catches my eye and I've taught this like I think in an IG reel somewhere like a year or two ago but usually like when what you were saying earlier like um like hey, just come alone like don't bring anybody like <laughs> this so is uncomfortable. yeah exactly but the thing is is that that is true like mm-hmm. obviously it's gonna be a red flag if you say oh well I'm gonna bring oh well my mom or my boyfriend or my friend or my sister and they're like well we'll no, it's like supposed to be our thing and we're shooting in a private location it's just like yeah no <laughs> no yeah. But, and also they get really mad because I know that photographers are still people too. And a really amazing photographer, for example, could have like a really bad like temper problem, but they are still legit. But the thing is, is like when it's like a red, like a super red flag is when it's like based on what someone else, like who they bring, like they get really upset about just about the fact that, hey, this person is bringing someone else when it's like their shoot, like they shouldn't be bringing anybody else. Mm -hmm. But the crazy thing is, is that I used to do that when I was a beginner photographer, I'll be like, well, I'm trying not to bring anybody to the shoot. But that was because I was so new and I was really shy and I didn't want like you wanted to be comfortable. Yeah. And I didn't want like outside people like giving me ideas. I just wanted to figure out like the whole posing thing 
on like how to pose myself without like, oh, you should do this, oh, do that. And I also didn't want them to like stand there and like watch the shoot um, like right there and like be judging me because I obviously mm. didn't know what I was doing at that point. So I was like, um, try not to like bring anybody. I kind of want to figure this out on my own. And it wouldn't be a private location. It would be outdoors, like an outdoor shoot right. like in public. Yeah. But um, when the person said, well, I want to bring like one of my other friends from like high school. I was like, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Just like tell them to like, like back off basically. Mind your but I, yeah. But I didn't get like <laughs> mad and upset and be like, Oh, well if you're bringing someone, I'm not going to do it at all. <laughs> like, yeah, I can like imagine yeah, like that's that. Understandable. I can imagine how that'd be for photographers where they're like these, you know, you have people who are like, Oh, I want to bring, you know, other people. And then I like, they just want to, they want to be a backseat driver. Like their friends want to be a backseat driver with the photographer and like shout out certain yeah. things and kind of right. intervene with like the photographer's ideas. Like I'm yeah. sure that would be really, really frustrating for a photographer as well. Right. Especially since the mm -hmm. other people that we'd bring, it would be like their mom or something that knows nothing about photography or posing or Molly. I'm just like, well, can you just leave me alone? Uh, I'm just like, not your opinion. Oh, this Why site has been <laughs> 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 like, Right. I'm just like, miss my aunt, please step back. <laughs> So, what kinds of tips do you guys have to protect other models, like either beginner photographers or professional models, from getting scammed, <laughs> like legit scammed by fake, mm. fake photographers from a model's perspective? I'm going to let you go first because um, my okay. brain is you got a brainstorming <laughs> right now. Um, well, if they're reaching, reaching you out on like Instagram or something, first I'd check to like see if they have other platforms where, you know, they post their photography and the models that they mo take pictures of. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, definitely see if they have other platforms that they put themselves onto. Uh, like she said, see if there's anything in their tag to reach out to those models. Um, just really try and know everything about this yeah. person before you just go and mm -hmm. meet him somewhere to go take pictures exactly yeah sometimes i follow well the scammers are super smart <laughs> so they'll like follow all the people in their area and i've seen that before like they'll follow like me or other people that yeah, are that, professional like, photographers yeah. yeah so it'll seem like oh well if they're friends with this photographer <laughs> they must be like a real photographer but in reality they're just like doing their research and like spying on all the models they're reaching out to yeah, yeah. creepy yeah and then reaching out pretending that they've never seen you before in their lives which they have like over social media yeah. <laughs> that's like really mm -hmm. scary to me like i don't know man like <laughs> i honestly thought that i was like a red flag for being like well don't well don't bring anybody else to the shoe and i was like wait well i'm preaching to people to not do that but then again i was doing that in the beginning yeah no hearing <laughs> it from that perspective mm -hmm. that makes sense right i yeah. was like watch me be like a red flag <laughs> no but at the end of the day like if something doesn't sit right with you it's just better not to go. You yeah, know, just I mean, go because that. your time is just as valuable as a model as the photographer's time. The photographer's time is just as valuable as the photographer, and so that's something that a lot of people need to keep in mind. Because when I was first getting into modeling, I didn't see like high value in myself as a beginning model, and so I was like, "Oh my gosh, this person wants to, you know, connect with me, and make content, yeah. like." I basically have to be at their every breaking whim and not ask questions. Right, otherwise, right. I'm not going to make it kind of thing. Right. And later on, it wasn't until I learned like, okay, I want my time to be valued just as much as they want their time to be valued. And X, Y, and Z needs to be there in order for me to actually take the time out of my day, get my nails done, do my hair, do my exactly, makeup, pick out the outfits. Like, money. Yeah, exactly. It takes time. Time and money. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, like I had mentioned earlier, making sure you do your research and not only make sure that they're connected with other people, whether it's in the area or in ju just in general, but um, honestly, you could honestly Google them too, because like she was saying, they're going to have different platforms. Um, but as far as that goes, conversation is also important, making sure that they're professional when they're talking with you kind of you can kind of exactly. professional photographers have a way of talking when exactly. they're serious about shooting with you yeah. and if they're very lacking as far as um information goes and kind of beating around the bush responding super late it's kind of one of those things where you can honestly screenshot it and send it to a friend and be like what does this look like you know kind of just getting some verification that way um 
But it's kind of hard nowadays when you can just have all these professional photos at your access without watermarks and to post them and buy your Instagram likes and Instagram followers. And for somebody who's in the beginning, it's really hard to differentiate between a photographer who's legit and a photographer who's not. But honestly, just doing your research, going down the rabbit hole, women, we love to do that and we're very good at it. (laughs) (laughs) So just tapping into that and being comfortable. And at the end of the day, like we were talking about earlier, bring a friend with you. And if that photographer seems weird about it, you know, that's kind of like a gut choice at the end of the day. Like, what are you actually going to do? Is it worth it kind of thing? So exactly. I feel like another red flag too, is like, if they never post their face, like anywhere, mm. it's just like oh, oh, picture, yeah. picture, picture, picture of a camera, picture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. in, in, in the beginning, I didn't want to post my face either. So I'm just like, I just want people to know me for my work and on my face, which is actually kind of dumb now thinking about it. That was like, three. <laughs> <years>. <laughs> that was like, three plus years ago i'm just like if if i'm meeting up with someone like for an outdoor shoot like they need to know what i look like no <laughs> honestly like, like oh this is you right hey yeah. what's up it's like, hey you're just gonna be a random person with a professional professional camera mm-hmm. and i feel like some people like when they have a professional camera they'll be like okay well i'm a professional now and it's just like just because you have a professional camera doesn't mean you're a professional photographer yeah just because yeah, you, you got a car doesn't mean you know how to drive <laughs> exactly okay. i'm just like you can yeah. just be a hobbyist but say that mm-hmm. you know what i mean it's just like i feel like when you call yourself a professional photographer but really you're just a hobbyist that takes pictures of like the grass on the weekends it's like <laughs> <laughs> It's like you're giving people like false hope, like, oh, this person is like really, you know, good, knows knows what they're doing. And at the end of the day, they just mm-hmm. they just don't know anything, <clears throat> especially if they like do like, for example, like they take pictures of their pets, you know, like pet photographers. But they're like um, like um, communicating with models and they're just like, well, I want to like collab like on a portrait shoot and but just say that you're a professional photographer. I'm just like. But you have no experience and you may have experience Mm. in pet photography, but not portraits. So why are you giving people false hope that you're an actual professional that has experience knowing what (laughs) knowing what you're doing? Dude, yeah, (laughs) like um, I've had a handful of photographers reach out wanting to shoot portraits and their Instagram is all landscape. (laughs) And I'm like, your landscape is beautiful, but like. (laughs) I mean, like, there's, like, a science (laughs) to this stuff, man. I swear, if you, like, cut out my ear or my shoulder. Exactly. Or, like, we do a full body and my foot's missing. Right. Just, like, I'm not going to post that. (laughs) And I'm not saying that, like, you can't be versatile. You can totally be versatile. Right. But, like, nine times out of ten, when I was first starting, I wasn't paying attention to that kind of stuff. So I'd spend hours with these photographers. They get, you know, the photos that they want. And then I'm looking at this, and I'm like... Like, it's a full body. Everything's in there, but then my elbow's gone. Right. And I'm like, I don't really know. Do I just zoom it in? And like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's So it's, uh, that that can also be a red flag. Right. You got to know what your niche is as a model and what you want to shoot. Exactly. And then match with the photographers who want to do that. And like, sometimes you got to pay for it. You got to right. pay for it. Sometimes you need to reach out to a photographer and pay for professional photos. Right. When I first got, um, I don't mean a bunny trail, but when I first got into modeling, I paid hundreds of dollars for like these professional headshots from um, this like mother agent that I was with in Detroit. And I took their advice on, you know, what I, I didn't know. I, you know, I was a beginner. I was a beginner. Um, but I took their advice on what they thought my photo should look like and how they should be portrayed in order to be sent to um, high fashion areas. And they like photoshopped my photos. I spent hundreds of dollars and I didn't even feel comfortable posting them because it didn't look like me. And so that's something too. like if somebody's trying to change your image or it's not, it's not like true to who you are and what, you know, the niche that you're going into, it's not, 
you know, they can be a great photographer, but it's not, ultimately it's not worth it. And it's not right. going to do you any good in your, in your career. Right. Especially since if it's not for that specific person, because I'm pretty sure there's somebody out there that would love that type of look. Like they look like dolls or like over retouched, mm-hmm. like, like little like animation characters or mm-hmm. something, but it's just not for everybody. And also like editing styles for, for photographers is not for everybody. So I feel like some mm-hmm. photographers, especially like me, I take things like personally, well, it's just like when someone tells me like, well, your style just isn't my style. Like I, just don't like how you edit photos i'm just like okay well it's not for everybody but like Mm -hmm. i feel like people like also for models and photographers they should stop like taking like things personal because i recently just went to um a casting call and i don't think i don't think they called me but i didn't like take it personal i'm just always like well yeah i'll try to like go to the next one like i'm not trying to get into like i'm trying to get into modeling but i did like a fashion no like beauty pageant and I'm not sure beauty pageants are for me, but I do want to get into like the type of modeling that I shoot with, like with my clients and stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, that's so cool. It's great to be ver- versatile when you're a photographer and a model. And then, you know, not only from behind the camera how to pose models, but you know what it feels like and how right. if it feels awkward or whatever. Like that's just a, a great trait to have. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I'm doing it, so I can understand my clients better. Even the clients that literally do not care about modeling at all, like I still want to help them, you know, like pose. Because mm-hmm. that's kind of like my promise as a professional photographer because my my target audience are like young people who don't model. They're just regular everyday people. And my promise is like, I will make you look like a model, like in my photos. Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah, I love that. It's like a little promise thing. That's cute. <laughs> yeah. What do you guys both classify as a collaboration in the photography and modeling industry? Like, is it okay for a photographer to ask for a free shoot just for a collab or should they pay or should the model pay? Like, how do you think that guys, how do you think that should work for you guys? I mean, mm. I feel like that depends because I feel like it could be a yeah. situation where it's like both of you guys are needing content, so you, you don't want to charge <laughs> and you, what is it called? The... Oh my gosh, I forgot what it's called, but trade I, for photos. Yes. Yeah. That, oh yeah. That TFP. where you just want to do that. Yeah, TFP. Yeah. But if, like you said, you're going out and you're wanting to try to s- really step into modeling, sometimes you are gonna have to pay for photos right. that you know might cost a little more. And as from a photographer like stance, um, yeah, sometimes what you're gonna want to like, hey, you know, I do want to do this shoot for you and whatever. But, you know, I feel like, um, or I don't even know how they honestly, how do you ask someone like, hey, I, um, I actually do want to charge you for this shoe. Right. Like, what would you, like, say? Or how do you tell your clients that, like? If a model or if it's, like, a to. friend, actually. Like, a friend but the, a friend that's not, like, a super close friend, but a friend that you, like, still are going to charge. Like, hey, I'm doing these photos for you, but I still want to charge you. Like, right. Like, how do you? That's a good question. I forgot what I told the the last person. This happened like a couple months ago, but I was like, well, you can like shoot with me, like have kind of like a mini like trial one with me for like 30 minutes. Like I have like a mini studio in my house. Oh, nice. It's very small. Like it's nothing, nothing fancy, but have like um, a studio in my house. And I can be like, well, we can do like a 30 minute shoot. So you can see, you know, like what, like if you want to work with me, like actually like pay me for like longer sessions and more like edited photos. Cause my packages, like, they include everything, like, retouching the, you know, like, the gallery. Like, I don't, like, limit, like, oh, you're only getting five, ten photos. Like, I give, like, my clients basically every good photo that I have, and I, like, retouch everything. If there's something awkward in the back, I retouch it. If they have, like, some type of, like, pimple that we didn't notice during the shoot, then I see it in post, then I I remove it in post. And I feel like that's, like, a lot of value. So I feel like, well, you can, like, try me out for free. So I'm just not, like, dismissing them and be like, oh, well, you're never going to see me if you don't pay me first. Like, (laughs) I don't want to give off that type of vibe. Like, oh, well, I'm just better than you because you're coming to me and I'm the professional. You're just, you know, like, begging me. (laughs) So, Mm -hmm. like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, so that's what I would say for sure. I love this question. I think. um, (laughs) (laughs) So... Okay, like I mentioned earlier, if, if if you're a photographer and you're tapping into a completely different line of work and you're reaching out to someone and saying like, hey, I really want to shoot with you, you know, I'm trying to get into X, Y, and Z, 
I feel like in that respect, you're getting something from the model and they're really doing you a service. So to reach out and have that conversation and then go, but I want you to pay me. I don't think that's fair personally. Um, photographers can do whatever they want. <laughs> but um, in the other light, if I reach out to a photographer and it's more of like a mutual thing, like, you know, I, I have a, I don't want to be like, I have a following, but like, I, you know, I'm, I am involved in the community and I have a lot of people that I can send your way. Um, and they're like, okay, well, you know, I want to collaborate with you and I offer really great content and it's a give and take an equal exchange. Um, then that's usually where I'm like, okay, I have no problem, you know, taking some time out of my day and helping create content for no charge because in, in return, you're still getting something. It just might not be like a financial payout. Right. And so as long as there's an equal give and take, I think it's fair to do, you know, to ask for collaboration. You know, you never know um, what someone's going to say. Um, I've even had it where somebody's reached out to me and they're like, hey, what's your rate? And I tell them, and they go, honestly, that's not really in my budget. This is what I'm doing. This is the cause of what I'm doing. And I would still love to work with you. I'm like, yeah, dude, like if, you know, if I resonate with that, I would love to still work with you. And that's also how you kind of get your foot in the door with some people. And, you know, once they kind of expand and they see your value in your work, they're going to want to pay for you, pay for you. <laughs> they're going to want to pay you. <laughs> they're going to want to uh compensate you and um that should be with like anything whether you see value in a photographer a model a hairstylist um a a real estate agent you know whatever it is um people are going to put their money where they see the value and so exactly there should either be that a financial compensation or they should be equal give and take Exactly. I completely Mm -hmm. agree with that. I was actually watching a YouTube video like I think a year ago about this exact same question. And they said um, this was a professional photographer on his YouTube channel. And he he was saying that it's like a collab should basically like basically like the definition of it is like when one um, professional or like creative in whatever field it is like they collaborate with another person from that field or like profession and they're both on the same level like I'm not talking about the same level like social wise like oh they they both have like 5,000 followers or something I mean like they both like they both have basically the same level of experience and like Mm. I guess clientele and if someone is like below that like either the photographer or model it's like not a fair exchange and somebody yeah should be charging Mm -hmm. because it's not a fair exchange you know what I mean and Mm -hmm. I agreed with that too I was like yeah I'm like, I should collab with people on my level. You know, like, (laughs) know your worth, know your worth, but don't get overzealous and be realistic. Exactly. You know what I mean? Be realistic. That's, that's the biggest thing. So just drawing that line of what am I worth, but then also to humbling yourself enough to know, like, that person may be, that photographer, that model may be a little out of your league. And if you really want to work with them, you're going to have to find a way for them to work with you to where they get something in return, however they see fit for their time. Right. And I'm a huge fan of like compromising. So it's like, well, if a photographer wants a model to like shoot for free, they can be like, oh, well, it's not going to be like an hour, two hours of just like, you know, like straight shooting. And it can be like, well, maybe we can condense into like 45 minutes if that's like in your schedule. If that's like a thing you guys can both do, it's like, Mm. well, at least we get something if it's not like a full hour shoot. Because the longest shoot I've ever done was five hours long. And that was in the beginning. And and I was so, I had COVID and everything, but I was like, I'm going to finish this shoot. That's when you starve as a model. Those are those shoots (laughs) where you're like, just like throwing like candy bars in your face (laughs) in between the shots. Right. So I'm just like, Mm, and sh- and she was making a sacrifice too because she ma- she came all the way from my house to I from I think Lithia and I live in Riverview so it's not that far but she still like still made the drive like to my house yeah but she's not a model she's just one of my old old school friends so I was like you know what this can be like a cool thing and she was like well I've always wanted to do um like a milk bath shoe it was a milk bath um, mm. yeah and that was a trend like, <laughs> yeah and then she's like okay well I guess it's worth it but we didn't really know it was gonna be five hours so I'm just like. And usually when a photographer shoots for that long, they're just like, dang, I should have charged. Like, look at all the money I just lost out on. But for mm-hmm. me, I was like, dang, she drove all the way over here for five hours. 
and she had stuff to do, but she like like made time for me, especially since I was mm. I was like a nobody back then. I didn't even know how to put the camera in focus back then. <laughs> but thankfully it worked out. <laughs> Those five hours were such good practice for me. Like I don't regret it. And I was like really sick that day. So I was like in a lot of pain, but mm-hmm. I mean, I made it through. And those those are the photos that made it onto magazines. Oh, really. period. Yeah, I was, period. I was like, sis. It's worth it. <laughs> Get it. That's awesome. Yeah. What are the best tips you guys have for aspiring models that want to go beyond just freelancing whenever they can? Well, no, not there. <laughs> <laughs> the last part. <laughs> you got. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say uh, just be open to trying everything and not be Mm. so picky with your pictures because I know I struggle with this too. Like I am just so hard on myself when it comes to pictures and I'm just like, oh, I don't like it all. It's not the photographer's fault. It's just that I just feel like I look at the picture. I'm like, I don't even recognize myself. Like, is that me? (laughs) So, yeah. And I feel like going to like meetups like all over town, like I'm pretty sure that's like a thing in every city or like every country, like for photographers in this industry. But I feel like um, getting content is super easy going to meetups because you get to meet a bunch of photographers you can either hire in the future or just collaborate with in the future, depending on their level of their like a hobbyist or like a professional photographer. But I have met so many models and have got such great content just by going to like free meetups, even paid meetups. Like I feel like it's all worth it at the end of the day because those are collaborations no matter if they're mm-hmm. like a, a beginner most of them are beginners i don't even know because they're so good like in front of the <laughs> camera so i'm just like well whatever level level they are on they still show up to these events so i yeah. feel like that's like really worth it especially if because some people i feel like they want to be like freelance because it works for their schedule more and they don't w- really want to be a- signed which is fine i feel yeah. like being signed should be like everyone's like top list if i'm not signed then i'm like a nobody <laughs> mm. <laughs> but i feel like you should you should want to know like your niche and stuff and the things that you're good at because i also feel like nobody like in any industry like photography modeling like to be you know like a jack of all trades be like well i can just do everything because everyone's like well what do you like a master in like what do you like specialize in because like mm-hmm. i can take like food photography product photography but that's like on the side as a hobby. I'm not a professional at those like genres. I'm a pro- professional at like regular portraits, you know, boudoir, couples, engagement, stuff like that. So mm-hmm. it's like people will hire me for that. But if they want me to do something on the back end that I'll accept, like a product photography shoot, even though I'm not professional, like I'll still do it. Even though they know I'm not, you know, like specialized in that niche. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, let's see. Going far and beyond in modeling than just freelance. So, um, I'll keep this short and sweet, but um, honestly, my advice would just be to put in the work. For sure. Um, You only get better at taking photos by watching yourself, Mm -hmm. right? So um, if you can even like, if the photographer has a mirror at your shoe, if it's a studio situation, make sure that you can see yourself. When you're at home, practice your face, honestly, like in the mirror, um go to meetups if you're in a town where they have meetups and stuff attend all of those network market yourself connect with people do collabs I mean do honestly like if you know it's gonna be high quality like collaborations do them um ask for advice don't feel you know dumb or anything for asking the questions that you need to ask in your line of work and how to be better take criticism with you know a grain of salt but also take it seriously um and you're not going to be perfect in the beginning and you're not going to love everything right in the beginning you're not you just need to get your face out there you need to get exposure you need to get practice and just go from there and give people you know like content and like education Mm -hmm. like I teach like about like little things here and there like about lighting and stuff because I feel like you still need to give value to your audience yeah because like why else like are you learning all these things if you're not gonna educate other people do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because I yeah. feel like that's kind of like a waste of like, oh, you have all this knowledge in your head, but you're not putting it in a book. You're not, yeah. you're not videotaping it to like put it like, for example, on a podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To add on to that, they even have Facebook groups that you could just join and it's just models and photographers yes. that are willing to do, you know, these what was it trade for photos yeah and trade for photos yeah, you know yeah. like yeah. there's just so many resources that everyone has nowadays where it's like yeah if you're not putting in the work then it's your own yeah and everyone's doing. so diverse and so there's you can find you can kind of figure out what you want to do as a model 
by just doing a bunch of things. Like there's all these collaborations and all of these ideas that all these really great, amazing, creative photographers have. And they honestly, like the wackiest ones are the most fun, you know? Yeah. And then you're like, wow, maybe I do like, you know, maybe I do like this and maybe I do want to do more of this. And you never know unless you like put yourself in those, in, in that environment and put yourself in those shoots. Exactly. Yeah. I feel like good photographers will also be giving back feedback like during the photo shoot. I feel like they yeah. just shouldn't stay quiet. I told people that all the time, like mm -hmm. don't stay quiet because they're going to make the, the model possibly feel bad. Like, oh, I probably sucks or they're not saying anything. They're just going to be quiet. But I always give my models feedback like, hey, maybe do this instead of this. Hey, you look better. Like this side of your face looks better than this side. Let's try this. And mm -hmm. maybe let's do this pose not with your legs straight, but like bent and stuff like that. And yeah. I'll like encourage them be like, oh, my gosh. Yes, girl, do this. And I'll like be hyping them love up. That. Yes. Not like a creepy way. But I'll be like, yes, like keep doing that. I, I love like that. that. <laughs> do it again. Please. <laughs> okay. No, I love photographers like that, especially <laughs> photographers that are like, just paying attention to small details like because I just when I look at pictures of myself I'm like oh my gosh why is that strand of hair like on my shoulder like that or like why am I like sweating so much someone told, should have told me to like dab my face right. or I'm like, like yeah. what the heck is the photographer looking at stuff <laughs> yeah. where it's like you could have told me man <laughs> the yeah. hair ties on the wrist yeah. yeah yeah I've done that mistake so many times I'm like when am I gonna learn this is like my third shoot ever <laughs> how am I supposed to like learn this you know, so fast little things yeah it's really important especially if you're a beginning photographer and you're working with beginning models to make them feel comfortable exactly. because if they're not comfortable they're gonna look uncomfortable and then you you can honestly just be wasting a couple hours yeah. right you know I mean, so the photos aren't gonna seem like natural it's gonna exactly like kind of forced like exactly yeah, funny like silly weird you know yeah. give the advice if they need it and you know just talk just talk and be honest right. and be you know soft-spoken about it you know don't be mean but just have that open line of communication hey we're comfortable with each other we're working with each other let's make something good and let's communicate during the, that process Right. And in my studio, there's like no air conditioning, but I have a fan. So I'll make sure the fan is on my model. So they're not sweating. So I'm like, are you okay? Can you feel the fan? Like you want to make sure they're comfortable yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Like not like, like hyping them up and making sure that they're like physically okay. Yeah. <laughs> just imagine I'm just like, oh, just let you go. Just like run the makeup down. Especially if like an eyelash is like oh, gosh, down. That. I'm just <laughs> like, those are like obvious things. But I feel like I catch more things in post, especially since I can blow up the photos and be like, how can I, how did I miss that? <laughs> I'll be like, see yeah. like a little thing. I'm just like, okay, well, I'll just hide that in post. I'll I know, like you literally like <laughs> can't catch them all. It's not Pokemon, you can't catch them all. Right. You know what I mean? I'm just like, you know, blow <laughs> this up. Have you guys ever thought about becoming a photographer, like, as a hobby? Yeah. Um, honestly, um... I feel like I used to have fun with it a lot. Like me and my friend had a, like our own little YouTube channel <laughs> that we would just make videos like what to do when you're bored and just be us doing some <laughs> weird, crazy stuff outside or just like some random skits like a shark attack bit me and like I'm like crawling on the floor with like ketchup all over my leg and like I'm looking all crazy and not the ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> what and about you? <laughs> uh, I've thought about it. <laughs> um, I I like photography, um, but on, on my cell phone, Ca uh, cameras right. are are um actual cameras are a little confusing to me. Right, that's how it started on my phone. I'm just like, well, if I take good photos on my phone, I should start taking them all on my camera. Right? Yeah, right. But uh, I like content creation more. So whether it's like content creation for myself or um, the past couple jobs I've had, I've made content for their social media, videos, photos, whatever, like the creative stuff. I really like that. Um, but as far as just like photography, I've never really thought about picking up a like a camera and just d shooting how um, – just normal photographer shoot usually it's just like content creation that i really really like right yeah well we're out of time you guys <laughs> okay so go ahead and shout out to your igs follow me on instagram alana vasquez oh <laughs> follow me on instagram hey it's t bear everyone <laughs> thinks it's hey it's bear but there's a t in there hey it's the letter t bear I thought it was yes. Yeah, and T Bear. I am Brianna Lisa Photography. Again, your host. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Yes. You can go ahead and check out my new website, Brianna Lisa Photography. And I'll see you around.